Hi, okay, I'm going to continue with conditional distribution. So in the last video, I did marginal distribution. So when you look at conditional distribution, we are now looking only at the cells. So what are the cells? The cells are everything but the total of your two-way table. So here's my two-way table and my cells are what I am right now um, highlighting. All right, so I recreated here and it says find the conditional distribution for gender. So if you remember, gender is looking at the rows. So I basically just recreated my cells, which are empty. And what we have here, by the way, are counts, which is the same as frequency. So counts are also known as frequency. And when I turn a count to a percentage, that is called a relative frequency. So relative frequency, I have a percentage and frequency, I have a count. So you can be given a table with counts or you can be given a table with relative frequency. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look how we would find conditional distribution for gender. When I look at the cells, the first thing I'm gonna look at is my rows. So I could first look at the boys and I'm gonna look across. So each cell is going to be the count on the inside divided by its total row. So for example, this will be one out of 14, this will be five out of 14, and this will be eight out of 14. So I can actually just rewrite it here as one out of 14, five out of 14, eight out of 14. Now these numbers don't really mean anything. I have more information when I convert it to a percentage. But notice when you add all this up, it adds up to 14 out of 14, which is 100%. So one out of 14 in percentage is 7.14%. Five out of 14 in percentage is 35.71. And eight out of 14 in percentage is 57.14%. So these are my conditional distribution for gender, but we are not done because now we're going to do the same thing for the girls. So looking at the girls, I'm going to look at each cell and divide each count in that cell by its total. So this one will have 6 out of 13, 4 out of 13, and 3 out of 13 for a total of 13 out of 13. And then of course we will convert it to percentage. So again, for girls, it would be 6 out of 13, 4 out of 13, and 3 out of 13. And then we would calculate this as a percentage. 6 out of 13 is 46.15% this would be 30.77% and this is 23.08%. And so what this gives us, if you add up the whole row, we should get 100%. So basically this is it for the conditional distribution for gender. We have calculated it. I want to do the conditional distribution for color. I'm going to do the same thing, except instead of looking at the rows, we will look at the columns. So going back to the columns, I'm going to look at every cell. Okay, so remember the cells are everything in your table, but not including your margins. So not including the margins. So every cell looking downwards, because that is the color preference for colors, I'm going to fill this out. So I'm going to say one out of its total, seven, six out of seven. And one out of seven and six out of seven is seven out of seven, which makes sense. That's a hundred percent. And then we're going to do the same thing for the top. We're going to say five out of nine and four out of nine, eight out of 11 and three out of 11. So rewriting that here, I'm going to have one out of seven, six out of seven, five out of nine, four out of nine, eight out of 11, and three out of 11. So that when you look down, you can see that your total adds up to 100%. Now calculating this as a percentage, that would give us 14.29%, and this would be 85.71%. And again, if you add up the total, it would give you 100%. So five out of nine is 55.56%, and this would give us 44.44%, and converting this to percentage is 72.73% and 27.27%. So this completes the conditional distribution for the color variable. Now, why are we calculating conditional distribution? Because many times 
we are asked that based on these calculation, if there's an association between any two variables, in this case, we were asked to find the association between color preference and gender. So you always want to answer a question first by saying if there is an association or if there's not association. And then what you want to do is use context. So what are we talking about? We're talking about gender versus color preferences. And the last thing you want to use in your statement is whether uh, you want to use percentages, you want to use statistics to um, state whether there's an association or if there isn't. Now, if there's a big gap in the percentages, how much of a big gap? Probably a bit more than 5%. You would say, yes, there is an association. And if the percentages are very similar, then you say there is not an association. So an example you could say is something like this. Yes, there is an association between color preference and gender. 14.29% of boys prefer red compared to 85.71% of girls. 55.56% of boys prefer blue compared to 44.4% of girls. And 72.73% of boys prefer green compared to 27.27% of girls. So that is just one example how you can answer the question of is there an association between the colors. So again, you always want to state the problem in context and you want to use uh, statistics to back it up.